Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Legend of the Stone Dell. We like to call it Lotso, and my name is Chris. I'm Justin. And I'm Alan. Hey, Alan, welcome to F back to Lotso, buddy. Good to be back. You're done killing fish, huh? Yeah, they all, they're all done. So you back uh, for the rest of the year, or do you go fishing later on, too? Um, no, right now I only do the one, but yeah. I'm probably going to do more. Really? Yeah. Well, it gets more money. Well, well, welcome back. Welcome back. Well, we're glad you're here because we've got kind of a fun episode planned. Uh, tonight we're going to do something a little different. We've got the live stream with us right now um, over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live. We're recording this July 30th. So uh, what we're doing is we're going to be pulling from the chat room. We're going to be saying, hey, guys, uh, feed us your ideas, feed us your topics. And we've got kind of a list that we're going to be running down with them and seeing what they think. And they're going to power the show. This is going to be a really uh, viewer-driven feedback episode of Lotso. And included, sprinkled throughout there, is we'll probably have our top three party games sprinkled in, right? Somewhere in there. Somewhere, pot- potentially. Uh, but before we get to that, let's get into the Lotso news. That righteous music made right there by Mr. Justin signals it is time for the Lotso News. Now, this week, these last two weeks have been sort of bare in news that we would typically cover on Lotso. This week, some of it kind of made consideration. We debated it a lot here on the live stream. We talked with the chat room, and we've kind of decided to take it a different direction. Uh, This episode, we're going to focus on the um, DC Online trailer. Now, I've seen this already. You guys haven't, and uh, we're going to share it here with the chat room, and uh, we're going to play this live in Lotso. It's the DC Universe trailer, and we're going to get your feedback on it as you've seen it for the first time. All right, guys? I'm excited. All right, here we go. To Earth's true enemy. See, this is a movie. This is all cutscenes. She's a badass, isn't she? Come on. Yeah, this isn't actual gameplay footage. Is that is that yeah. Hamill? It's the Joker. Is Mark Hamill doing the voice? I don't know who's doing the voice. He's gotta be. He said he's he said he's almost done with it. He's not doing it anymore. Oh really? That's what I heard. It's no gameplay, but if it's representative of what the world looks like, I'm excited. Chat room says it is Mark Hamill. Lose something? Greetings, sister. This is an epic battle here for the audio listeners between the Green Lantern and who's the bad guy? I don't recognize him. Here, why? Where's the Flash? Oh, it's Shazam. <laughs> Dude, I'll play this game just to watch the cutscenes. Oh, 
Ja, oh. How epic is this? How incredibly epic is this? <laughs> you don't deserve to live. Diana. Oh. I know, right? <clears throat> Brainiac had returned. For years, he'd been stealing the powers of Earth's protectors, but we were too busy fighting amongst ourselves to see the danger. With you three dead, Brainiac quickly eliminated the remaining heroes. The lucky ones died fighting. Finally, I alone survived a rat in the walls of the Brainiac construct. I have traveled through time to warn you. This is my past, but your future. And it means the end of humanity, so together, we must change it. What have you done, Luthor? Given you a fighting chance. He's lying. It's some kind of trap. Why should we trust you? Because if you don't, Earth is doomed. <laughs> What do you think of that, guys? I'm all about that. See, I like that video is awesome, <clears throat> but yeah. no gameplay. Well, that's where they always do it. Yeah. No, you're you're right. No, you're right. There's no gameplay, but that the the primary I think goal of that is to uh, set up the world, right? You're setting up the universe that you'd be playing in. Oh yeah. What do you think of that universe? Awesome. And and what do you think of of playing with uh, characters like these? I just like the fact that you're playing, you know, not everyone's going to be a bunch of jokers running around or, you know, anything like that. You're going to be playing as almost minions, it seems, or, you know, villains along with your favorite heroes or villains. Yeah, so you're, you'll, be able, you'll be able to play the main heroes when you're doing player versus player PvP style. But when you're playing the actual game, you're going to be your own character. I don't know if I really like that, because I prepare... If I'm going to invest all my time in a single character, I'd like to be able to play that character when I go into player versus player. You know what Is I mean? Is that just the beta, though? No, I, that's how they're going to do it. Really? Yeah, yeah, well, they... I, I don't know, I think it's probably a IP issue or something. It's going to be, for instance, matched in Arena PvP, where you can uh, play as the... Classic DC heroes says uh, Jeremy in the chat room, but uh, I mean, the game has definitely got potential. They're saying beta in November, so you'll be able to get your hands on it pretty soon, actually, really. And uh, this is a serious contender in what is a lot of really great MMOs coming out in a very short time period. This next year or so is just a crazy time for MMOs, and this is going to be another one. This one has a little more of an action. Yeah, see it. what I just I, I read on the the overview that it says it's uh, an MMO action game RPG. Yeah. So you know that's what that's the one thing I can't get around with World of Warcraft and other MMOs is no combat. You know, it's you just sit there and click on a guy and chop him up or whatever, and you know you press buttons to you know press a number to have him do a spell. But if it's actually button combinations. I love that stuff. Yeah. Now check out uh, kind of so uh, Jeremy in the chat room is talking about like a a possible legend mode where you mode where you'll be able to play as the classic superhero and it's going to be a storyline pre-planned PVP match. 
Oh, that's so maybe cool. somebody could be playing as the Joker, and you might be playing as Batman. Nice. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, that would be a lot. But of fun. I'd still like to take my own guy into the Batman. I agree. When I, can. I agree. I do want to. I want to. I want to spend all my energy and time on that guy. But I think you know, as we're going to be following this game, if major things update you, or if major things come along that we think you guys might be interested in, we'll update you then, and we'll probably end up taking a look at it when the game ships, or at least hits beta as soon as we can get our hands on it. I think we'll probably cover it right here. Yeah, that'd be also. pretty fun. Yeah. All right, guys. With all that, let's get into the audience grab bag. <laughs> This is the audience grab bag. It's something new. People have joined us here on the live stream over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live. And uh, the first question came at us. Uh, Justin, play Titan's Quest. Or talk about Titan's Quest. Now, we'll be, we'll be up front. Titan's Quest is what? Like a four-year-old game? Yeah, it's 06. But uh, it's something you recently picked up. And uh, you uh, not commonly, or commonly not a console player, or a, a desktop player, but you've been playing away at this. Now, what do you think? I love it. I think it's great to have a a game, a loot fest type of game. If I've been wanting one. I got a uh, what was it, Death Bank. I was so excited for that game. Then I got that, and I as soon as I started playing it, about three or four hours into it, I just wanted something bigger. That was oh, the same okay. concept. So Death Bank kind of got you sparked. Yeah, I can make, totally understand. It kind of makes me feel bad for Death Bank because I didn't give it all the love that it needed. The chat room wants to know how far along you are in Titan's Quest and what kind of skill route you've gone. Uh, my, I went, uh, the war mastery type of guy, the, the guy who can dual wield weapons. I can't remember the exact oh, class. Oh, cool. So you have like two swords or what? Yeah, yeah. I definitely, <laughs> have, I got a, I got a spider leg that poisons people. And then I got a super cleaver that I just got strong enough to hold. Now the graphics aren't like the most amazing thing, but they're actually not too bad for an older game. At the same time, about, you know, the the kind of the scaled back graphics, is I don't play PC games that much. Oh. And I got a pretty decent monitor and yeah. stuff going on, so... What do you think of quality-wise? It, it looks... Everything, you know, might be kind of not too detailed, but it is. It re- I'm full of shit. It is. It's beautiful. I think it looks great. Yeah, I, I watched him play it. It looks really good over... It. You can zoom in on it, and then you get to see more of the detail in it. Sometimes the view gets blocked, but it still looks really good. And it really reminded me of uh, like Brotherhood of the Blade for the PSP, but just like bigger, better, and better looking. Now, uh, do you have any major gripes so far with the gameplay? Uh, and specifically, I'd like to know what's, what's making it so good. So name the gripes and then talk about the good things. And then maybe we'll move to the next game question in the chat room. But You know, to be honest, I don't really have too many gripes with this game. I wish that no, there is. I want the uh, I want a place to store my stuff, you know. So if I'm collecting animals oh, yeah, and everything, yeah. because this game works where you can have about you know ten different amulets going at once, and the 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 loot systems exactly like uh, Brotherhood, where it gives you all the the square brick layout, yeah, and you can only fill it up with how much stuff you have. It's not done by weight; it's done by you know the shape of it hmm. and how many blocks it takes up in your inventory. Any complaints about camera control? There is none, so it's fine. You know, the camera works because it's it's one of those games too where you can zoom in real close or zoom very far out they're and do the top down. They're saying in the chat room they'd like to be able to rotate the camera. No, you can't rotate it, but I'm okay, fine with you? that. Yeah. I'm, there's enough to worry about when you're playing uh, games. All like right, this. so so fundamentally, dude, w- why why is this game so good? I don't understand what is the attraction. I do like, by the way, we're watching on the video version here, you can see when he runs in front of something, um, the object that the camera might be getting blocked by fades out nicely. It's a nice little clipping system where the objects kind of fade elegantly out like, you know, the trees and stuff. I yeah, like that it little touch. blocks your view. Yeah. yeah. So what makes this game so good, dude? I love how deep it is with the loot system and weapons and the the leveling's really good it's just kind of classic leveling but you get to pick two masteries my other one was uh you know the war kind of fighting guy and the other one was defense so if i'm going to be running into people i want to have good armor skills and all that stuff but the skill trees are great you know they got the basic energy health dexterity intelligence and strength type of skill sets okay and it's just it's just good I like the I like you know when you hit these guys and stuff. I like the way they fall over. You know, it, lo- it looks cool. Is the fighting is the combat interesting enough? 
Nah, kind of. I got it mapped onto the Xbox controller. Oh, how's that working? It's wor- you know, it was really weird to get used to at first, but once you get a hold of it, it works perfectly for me. Huh. And so you're able to play the whole game via the Xbox 360 controller? Yeah, when I get to menus like this, the inventory slots, and I'm selling my stuff back to people, I just pick up the mouse and I do it really quick because... Oh, okay. So you can still do that, too. Yeah, yeah. I use both, but when I'm just kind of running around killing things and doing quests, I... That actually seems like that could be kind of enjoyable. I it, wouldn't mind that for Stowe. Yeah, it's nice, because they were sitting there talking about how people with weak carpal tunnels and everything shouldn't be playing this game, and it's like, well, why subject myself to hurting myself in the future if I can just <laughs> hold a nice comfortable yeah. controller in my hand? Now, Jeremy in the chat room here, he's digging on the uh, sound quality, the music. I always turn the music off and listen to iTunes Do you? every single time. Alan, is this any kind of game you'd play, you'd pick up? I Yeah, I was actually waiting, because I have a new Mac on the way, and... I was hoping to get it through Steam, but then I found out today that it's not available on the Mac. So I'll probably end up just picking it up on Steam through my PC, and so we'll start playing. You I, could always I've dual boot that new Mac. Yes. Yeah, boot camp that sucker. Yeah. But, so you, after, but you think you'll break into it? Because I got this game, too. I bought the expansion pack oh, myself. Oh, yeah, I love this uh, kind of grind-out loot fest, Can we, you know, tons of weapons. Now, what's our co-op options here? I think it's four-player co-op. I know it's co-op, at least for one person, two people. Jeremy installed Titan's Quest today, too. Yeah, see, that's tons of fun. He's I, suggesting we have a four-way. I, I love that idea. And, uh, I totally These kind do of it. games are a lot of fun, especially when you play it with other people. You just kill a bunch of guys, get a bunch of loot, go sell it, level up, r- repeat. I don't know. It's hack and slash grind fest. Let's do it. Fun stuff. Now, uh, if you get it through, if we all get it through Steam, it's pretty slick to find each other too. I've been actually kind of enjoying that whole Steam system. Yeah, I haven't used Steam in years since like uh, Counter Strike, and that was a long time. Yeah. ago. Yeah, I guess what I think I originally so bought I have it for too. No idea what it's like. Now. I think that's my, that might have been when I got st- I got Steam a long time ago. Um, all right, well that wraps up the Titans Quest. I think is uh, we'll turn it over now to the chat room. Yeah, it's and, only twenty uh, bucks for the uh, the. Uh, Oh yeah, for the first whole game and the expansion right now on Steam, so it's it's cheap and it's great, inexpensive. Have you guys uh, have you guys been playing? I guess I guess I know you haven't been, Alan. But uh, Justin, have you been playing Alien Swarm much? I tried to play it once, but I haven't gone back to it. Now I think Jeremy and a few people in our Jupiter Force fleet have been, but I I only got to play Alien Swarm really briefly. I thought it was a pretty uh, decent gameplay, but. Um, it didn't grab me so much that I wanted to play it again, I think. It's free, so the price is right. It's on Steam, though, so you have to have Steam. But it's kind of a fun game, and it's an overhead space shooter. It's got some pretty good graphics on it, and uh, some fun gameplay aspects. I didn't really like the fact that like when you picked up a weapon, you had to drop the current weapon. I would kind of like to have seen that done differently. Right off the top, this makes me think of Zombie Apocalypse, but moving around. The controls are pretty funky, too. Uh, but it does have a four-player co-op mode, so that means people can bring over their laptop or you can have a couple of computers, you can install Steam, and everybody can have it on there, and you all can get it together in a game real quick and play for a little bit, at no cost. Yeah, I, I like this kind, you know, where you're just shooting everything, and it's kind of frantic, it looks like, and lots of upgrades, and, and get new guns. They're, sorry to interrupt, they're comparing the controls in the chat room to uh, Super Smash TV. I don't know if you guys ever played that. Oh, not in a really long time. I... There's uh there's already new maps in production according to the chat room, and uh, there's only one official story arc at this point. But uh, r- check it out if you have got Steam. I mean, there's no reason not to get it. The uh, the game is fun enough. So I just thought I give I thought I'd give Alien Swarm a quick mention before we moved on. Yeah, definitely worth. It looks good, that's for sure. You know, I think it's a clean looking game. It's yeah. not crazy, you know, awesome graphics, but it just looks really clean. But it didn't grab you that much either. Uh, I was trying to get mapped to the controller again, my Xbox controller, and I couldn't quite get it to work, so I just kind of gave up on it. I'm going to throw this question to the chat room, but what do you guys got for your party games? The chat room came up, they said, Alan, tell it to us, lay it on us. What is it, big guy? I have to say it's uh, Halo 1, the first one. Absolutely. Absolutely Halo 1. Because you had to link up the systems, you know, if you wanted to sure, play. Dude. There's no online. You just had to hook up the systems in a room with four TVs and four Xboxes. And a whole bunch of controllers. Now, can I tell you a story about Halo 1? Or do you want to say anything else before I get into it? Go for it. I had a client. um, They were in the aerospace industry. And uh, I was there on a Friday night working on their network. And um, 
funny thing happened is all of a sudden a bunch of people started showing up in their conference room and stuff like that. And they all were bringing original Xboxes. Now, this is only like, you know, nine, ten months ago. Oh, nice. And they're all bringing their original Xboxes and they're all playing Halo. Everybody was doing They made a huge Halo party, put it up on projectors, doing the system link thing. It was a really big deal. And it's the best. And I played I played Halo on the PC once it came out. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't originally pay Halo, play Halo on the Xbox, and it was always one of our land party games, or one of our favorites. Oh yeah, that's that's just what we do. We'd all go over to my friend's house, you know, and he had one big screen, and then we'd all bring over other TVs. Yeah, and we'd have like you know, four hour sessions of one capture the uh, capture the flag game. Yeah, we'd all start you know bashing on our friends and stuff, and they'd have like little little mutiny moments, and we'd recollect, you know, regroup and go for it, and There'd just be tons of soda cans and Slurpee cups and the junk typical food. gaming oh, scenario. Yeah. Call up mom at midnight. I'm gonna be late. We're in the middle of a game. I gotta go. What about you, Justin? Did you ever play much Halo? Not LAN party. I never played it once with anybody else. Oh, that's sad, dude. Well, well, I, I played the really campaign. Great, it's a good multiplayer. Yeah, I've never really been into multiplayer. I like I like campaign. Okay. You like to be in sole control of your destiny. Yeah, I guess. I, I I just think it's fun. I like the the single player campaign was great. Now, uh, Alan, I have a feeling that you've got another party game deep within your soul that you would love to share with the audience. Actually, not me. It was a uh, Jacious Seed. I hope I'm saying that right in the chat. Oh, from room. the chat room. Okay. He uh, mentioned Super Smash Brothers. Oh, absolutely. People always love this game, and to be honest, every time I played it, I thought I was doing good, I thought I was figuring it out, and they'd always laugh at me because I was so far behind. I actually had a hard time playing this too, and it does have a surprisingly low learning curve, and that's what I noted about it too. I would be at a party, and people could pick it up and just start playing it after a few minutes. And it's fun because it's got these memorable Nintendo characters that... Well, actually, I don't really like Kirby. Oh, come on. I'm sorry, dude. He's good. He bugs me. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say something about Pikachu. No, he's always up on my... I don't like Pikachu either. Okay, because Kirby's... Okay, well, this isn't Kirby show, but... <laughs> take it easy on Kirby. All right. Kirby's fine. But, you know, when you get Samus in there and you get Mario, I'm, I'm a fan of that. Yeah, I mean, that, that part of it was always really cool. I just... I always thought I was figuring out the controls, and then I would be very, very last when I thought I was, you know, one or two. Yeah, but it's a great pick. Now, uh, what about uh, y- Justin? You got you got a party game you want to throw at our face? Um, it's uh, a zombie apocalypse. Do you know? Okay, so what's kind of the cost of that? I think it's about eight hundred points, twelve hundred points. What's that in cash? You know, it's about ten bucks. All right, that's pretty good for a party game. Oh yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Oh, this looks pretty neat. So tell me about this. I'm not in the whole entire zombie thing too. I'm not one of those people that just you know needs to everything zombie. Yeah, I could care less about that. There I could have been killing anything, and I would have had a good time doing it in this game. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it, the fact that it's zombies doesn't matter. It's, it's, do it's like, it's zombies, like uh, uh, Geometry Wars, where you know the left wiggle stick controls where you walk, and the right wiggle stick controls where you shoot. Okay. And it's just, you know, your AK-47 is pretty much your worst gun, and you... You, you get know, shotguns. It looks a little repetitive. Oh, it's totally repetitive, but it gets hard after a while. Yeah, it gets very... But is it just harder hard. by just doing more guys? No, they got a bunch of different enemies coming at you. Like those guys right there with the uh, construction suits on, they touch you and you die, but if, you know, somebody else jumps on you, usually you can shake them off. And this is a 360 game? Yeah, or PS3, I think. Yeah, and they had environmental kills. Like, if you're watching the video, there's the... Uh, the airplane, airplane turbine. Yeah, and you can, you know, shoot the zombies into there, Love blast that. them into there, and it, they get sucked in and destroyed, or in that helicopter blade down That's below cool. on the bottom right, if you're watching. And it's just great co-op, too, you know? It's co-op, party game, whatever. It's Chase's Creed in the chat room says that he kind of... He enjoyed it, but it kind of wore off for him after a couple of days. Well, I guess I could say the same thing, too, but I played about eight hours of it in about two days. Yeah, we we felt like we did a pretty good job playing the game. Oh, and then my uh, <laughs> my girlfriend, she you know she likes games and stuff, but she doesn't always like the kind of games that me and Al like. So we put this one in, and we all played on the same TV, three controllers, and we all had a blast. Oh, she dug yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Interesting. I'm always interested in that, because that usually means that... Uh, uh, my lady friend would probably also enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It's just, it's good. 
Well, all right. So that's a pretty darn good party game, and it's on the arcade, which means you can download it on a whim when people are coming over. And tux- ten bucks, you probably have that and change on your account, anyways. So why not? Yeah, you can always get the trial version for free to see if you even like it. Yeah, it's a good little demo. So uh, let's let's talk about a great. Now, not everybody has a Nintendo sixty four sitting around, so this isn't one of the most relevant recommendations. But if you are retro like that, you do kind of have to appreciate uh, Star Fox. Oh yeah, it was it still was, holds up. Yeah, good game. You a big Star Fox fan, right, Justin? Gigantic Star Fox fan. But see, did did you guys play the ones on the Super Nintendo or the sixty? Oh yeah, buddy, I played both. I only played the sixty four. So, I I played the Super Nintendo primarily, but uh, still have a ton of respect for the N sixty four. Loved it, loved it. They just got those kind of cool, you know, airplane moments where you could just do that barrel roll right in between those two walls and oh, and slide right between them. There was just really cool just, moments in that game. Just a quick shout out, uh, OMG Jeremy, that BR Jeremy here from Jupiter Broadcasting mentions that uh, a friend of the network consoleclassics dot com. Um, that's uh, classics. That's C L A S S I X. You can actually, they let you download an emulator to play Star Fox, the N64 version, on your uh, PC. Oh, nice. So you could play it on your PC with your uh, controller. Oh, really? Yeah, with go to console classics. I did that with Banjo-Kazooie, but... It's a great one. So I guess that does make it more of a feasible party game then, because you can get it on your current system for super cheap. Oh, yeah. It was, when you get in these rings and everything, dude, when you're getting shot through those rings and it's just too fast and you can't even handle it. I love these games where you have to process things as fast as possible. Yeah, I know. Sometimes that's a bit of a detriment for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm, except that it, it, it feeds that ADD nature that I have. These are great games where I have a lot to have to, have, have to pay attention to. This feeds the competitive part of me where I know I can get this shit right and I just try it over and over again. Now, I thought maybe I'd throw out one of my party games. I'm going to be honest... I only play this game in a social situation. I've never played it any other way, and I'm going to be talking to you about Little Big Planet. You guys, have you guys played Little Big Planet? I, I don't think we've ever talked about it on the show. No, I've never played it. No, I don't own a PS3. Son of a gun! So this is kind of one of the this is kind of one of the big PlayStation games. Now, you guys, do you know the premise? Oh yeah, it seems really awesome. You build the, your own world. The whole thing is a level creator. Yeah, when when I first heard about it, I was super excited, and then I got really disappointed because I can't play it. Little Big Planet Two is on the way too, which should be interesting. Now, the thing that's really cool about this is not only is it kind of a social experience because you can pick other players' uh, Little Big Planet worlds to view, and so as a party, you can sit there and say, "Oh, let's go see this one. Oh, search for this. Let's go find this one." And then as a group, you get to go in there and make judgment on the on the level. Uh, but you can also create as a group, you know, and p- give people input, and make things, and then play it. Uh, it's a little bit of, sort of a more of a slower one, but if you've got the right crowd, it's actually kind of fun. Yeah, it just seems like a relaxed thing. You can switch back and forth between levels, you know, have other people mm-hmm. try it. If a level seems yeah. cool, you know, you can replay it a bunch of times with your friends, have everyone we, give it a go. We've had a we've had a friend of a uh, friend of ours who uh, husband and wife who also have a young child, and they came over for dinner one night, and we just fired this up on the PlayStation and. It is pretty colorful and nice. Yeah. Yeah, perfect for and playing even when kids are around. Yeah, there's no killing. There's, you know, there's no uh, explosions or or, or uh, cr- scary noises and stuff like that. I heard also that there was a uh, uh there was a level that looks so much like Mario somebody made it like, you know, yeah. level 1-1 one of you Super Mario. You can go Mario. search for it on the PlayStation game interface. You can get like Mario knockoffs, a lot of them. Uh, they were saying in the chat room too that the next version of um, Little Big Planet will have uh, more three D, not just a side scroller. I actually, I, I actually am uh, a huge fan of the side scroller. Yeah, I, I like the the two D platforming thing. Exactly. I like how like you know the new Super Mario Brothers totally went dude. that route. I you know I don't own that system either, but I played it and it was a lot of fun. And that's what this kind of reminds me of is just you know. That's that's why I really want to play it, but I couldn't justify buying a PS3 just for this one game. Mm-hmm. I, I I picked this up. I've I've enjoyed it, but I've probably I've not gotten my money's worth out of it. So chat room came in. And they said, "Let's talk about Mario Party." This is one that a couple of people in the chat room have thrown out at us. Is, Whoa, is Mario Party? Uh, well, we kind of got a little uh, humbug here in the group when we started talking about Mario Party. Alan, your thoughts? 
I didn't like it. It was pretty boring. Um, didn't even finish one of the board games. I don't know, you know, how many rounds or whatever. Whoa, shows, a harsh judgment there. Yeah. Uh, I even got to play Wario, and I love Wario like a Mario Kart. He's evil and fun. Alan, do you, uh, I mean, Justin, do you have any thoughts on Mario Party? I've never played it. You son of a bitch. That's that's right. <laughs> uh, here's, I'll give you my thought on it real quick. You played it? Uh, a little bit. Um, I played newer versions. Um, boy, I want to be nice to it. It it's kind of it's fun. It's 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 fun. It's not too bad for a party game. I guess for the most part, I find it to be a little underwhelming. Yeah, some of the mini games were fun, but then they got really repetitive, and I just didn't. I don't know. It got old really fast. Yeah, and slow. Yeah, really slow. It's too slow. But a couple people in the chat room liked it. I don't um, even know what it's about. It's just basically a, a board game, and then you roll, and when you land on certain squares, yeah. you got to do mini games. And that's and a fun. That's fun. Well, that's kind of a slick idea. Yeah, no, it is, but it just gets um, repetitive. Yeah, and how many have they put out? Over eight. I actually I thought at least eight. I actually see we're looking at the one we're looking at right now is like the uh, older version. I actually thought it got better on the uh, GameCube. I thought I thought the GameCube one was actually pretty fun. I um, played that one with some family like on a holiday. I did enjoy the GameCube version. Um, the version we're watching here was my least favorite. Oh, that was Mario Party Three, I think. I I have no idea which one I played. That was the other thing. Um, it could have been any any one of them. Okay. Well, so Mario Party isn't on our list necessarily, but there's definitely got some defenders here in the chat room, so we'll say we'll mark this one down for the uh for Mario Party from the chat room. The chat room recommends Mario Party. The Lotso panel is a little lukewarm on it. I wouldn't say cold. Lukewarm's good. Now we've been pretty gentle so far, you know, Mario Party. Killing aliens, things like that. You know, the real soft stuff. Let's get a little aggressive. I think one of these great um, party games that Justin brought up is uh, Street Fighter. Definitely Street Fighter. Doesn't matter which version, really, either. Yeah, they've all been pretty much fun growing up with, and now the the new one, Street Fighter Four. Yeah, with all the hyper editions and whatever editions. I mean, I think I played fifteen versions of Street Fighter Two, but. <laughs> It was just great because it's, you know, the longest a match can go is, you know, three minutes probably, three, four minutes. And then whoever loses passes the controller and, you know, you get to try to take down the winner and all that stuff. I think that's good good fun. Just yeah. really quick, you and know. And what I think is kind of cool about it, too, is you can have an expert play it where there's really some actual good, um, you know, uh, skill and, and, and uh, tactics being used. But you can also have people that are just kind of button masters play and they can still get some gameplay out of it. Oh yeah, it still it still works like that. You can you can definitely get lucky mashing some buttons, but when the guys just combo crazy, it's kind of hard to beat at times. <laughs> now another game that the uh, chat room points out that's uh, kind of mortal or uh, that's kind of like Street Fighter is Mortal Kombat. Oh yeah, this so, Mortal Kombat was more up my alley. I mean, I like Street Fighter, but Mortal Kombat was really where my uh, bread was buttered. Yeah, I just had Street Fighter right off the bat because my parents didn't want me playing Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I just remember going over to my neighbor's house using the blood code on the Genesis. and My know, parents didn't want me playing it either. That's interesting. Fatalities that was, and all that. Yeah, I had to sneak away. That was really going around back then. It was a nasty game. Well, I guess it was the one that first really started showing the blood gushing, huh? Oh, yeah. That fatalities. Was, oh, yeah, yeah. You get some brutal ones. Which made it a lot more fun. I don't know. Both these games I played a lot growing up with, so... You know, they both this, have their so are you saying you me. prefer uh, Mortal Kombat over Street Fighter? No, not at all. Uh, I just, uh, as far as fighting games, these are like the only two I really look forward to. I'm not into the whole Tekken thing or anything like that. I just... I used to love Virtua Fighter. I was down with that game. Hmm. But Street Fighter's number one. Yeah. The other one that was mentioned in the chat room was uh, the Marvel vs. Capcom Absolutely. series. Absolutely. Um, a lot of people really like this. I, this is the one I like to play in the arcade. Yep, that's how. That's always where I played it. I, I never owned it at home at all. I didn't pick it up on the uh, you know Xbox arcade I or anything I like that. I think I eventually did get it. I don't remember which console I got it on, but I eventually did get it at home. I didn't like it as much as I liked it on the arcade. No, it was still it, good though. Yeah, it was not the same when you got it home. Yeah, 
No, I, I, I did like the, you know, the mashups of the characters and everything like that, and made it pretty fun. But ultimately, it was just a playing with friends at the arcade type of thing for me. A lot of love in the chat room for Soul Calibur for a uh, fight game, for, for a party game. A lot of love for the Soul Calibur. Now, I don't think either one of you dudes ever played Soul Calibur, right? I never have personally played Soul Calibur. I did. I played the one with Spawn in it. That's the one I played. I remember that one. I played that one a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't remember which which number it is or anything like that. Was this one of the games with Yoda and Darth Vader in it at one point? Yeah, yeah. Like like four years ago or something? Definitely. That kind of got me interested. I kind of wanted to play it, but... That's like what it was uh, before. It was just, you know, it was Spawn and they had Link on the Nintendo one and... Oh, Solid Calibur came out for Nintendo? Holy cow, I didn't even know that. Yeah, it was it was during the original Xbox, PS2, and 64 days. I thought it was all PS3, or PlayStation. I thought they had that game. All right. Yeah, so, that, I mean, I did, I did play a little bit of it. Me and my friends played it. We rented it for a couple of weeks and beat the hell out of it. Cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I think this has been a fun live poll from the audience, but um, I think some people have been waiting to hear the story, the original source of the Lotso name, the Legend of the Stoned Owl story. And now we said we would hold it for when uh, Alan got back. Well, Alan's back, and uh, if you've been tuning in, you're probably one of the few people that uh, has been strung along so far and have been waiting to hear it. So why don't we get into it, guys? Where does the source of the Stoned Owl come from? What's the origination there? Um, You know, owls are known to be late night type of creatures, right? True, absolutely. And uh, that's when my friends and I were, you know, my buddy at the time still, but we um, we spend a lot of nights cruising the, the, the countryside of Washington. <laughs> and we'd be just, you know, we'd go out there to smoke as many bowls as we can and then come home and go to bed and wake up and do the same thing the next day. <laughs> and so we'd be out flying around, you know, out in the night, out in the woods, and if we weren't smoking a bowl, an owl would fly down in front of us. Or every time we started smoking a bowl, you know, once a night for about, you know, uh, probably about two weeks straight we saw this happen. Do you think it was the lighter? The flash of the lighter? We were in a car. We were going 40 miles an hour, so it was obviously the car doing something. But uh, he'd just fly right in front of you each time. Hmm. Come right past your windshield. You'd be booking down the, you know, the highway at, you know, 50 miles an hour, and this thing would just come right past you. And we've taken multiple witnesses out, told them the story, and they can vouch for it. And then you can reproduce it. Yeah, yeah. They've uh, the story is real. Alan, have you ever been a witness to this? Yes, actually, the first time that I had ever been told about the stories, we were driving on those same countryside roads in Washington, having a very fun evening. And as he was telling us the story, uh, like right when he got done telling it, it was like, okay, that was a good story. Then all of a sudden there was an owl flying down. And ever since that story, I have seen the owl countless of times on those late night countryside drives. It doesn't matter where you're at? No. no I, I saw him in Texas. Like it was not the same one, obviously, but... <laughs> so is it, is it the same was, owl here? In it, was a, it was a good sign, and it meant that I had a very, a very enjoyable evening that night as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, uh, it's one of those things, one of those stories too. That you know, when I told it to each person, it produces that holy shit moment, where you just don't believe what happened. How some idiot sitting there in its car, driving around some, you know, fucking plain ass country and you're sitting there telling this stupid story and then okay okay then all of a sudden bam dude and i'm sitting yeah. there pointing at it and they see it and it's one of those things where they don't really know what to say and it did happen and it does happen yeah and right after the story it happened and is it a different owl every time well i don't know i don't <laughs> i never catch up to him <laughs> but can you tell it all if it looks different it looks like an owl it looks like a big owl you want to hear the most horrible thing in the world huh so probably about four years ago I quit smoking weed for a while, and the next, uh, probably, you know, a couple weeks into it, I'm going up, driving towards, you know, I'm going to go play some basketball up at this uh, this school, and it's probably about 10 o'clock at night, 
We got some lights out there so I can see around. And honest to God, I smushed an owl with my car. I hit him with a big fat chrome bumper. Oh right, no! Right in the dome. <laughs> And I heard a big thump, and I look back, and I just know what I did. And so right when I quit smoking it, I take an owl. You know, my Chrysler destroys an owl. Wow. Symbolic. You know, well, yeah, I'm I'm thinking that he got up and was fine. I'm sure he just, <laughs> he probably shook it off. That's what, kind of what I was thinking, is waking up, you know, get clipped. So yeah. he's he's getting back there. Maybe have a bit of a headache, but other than that, he's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Walk You're it tough. off. Walk it off, man up. Well, that is pretty interesting. And so then that kind of transformed into a philosophy of life in a you know the yeah, lotso way the, 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 the lotso approach to video games and we don't mess with the owl so uh there you have it and that inspired the name of the show that we now sit around friday nights live over jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live nine o'clock every other friday but we've been talking more and more about going weekly and and if we do that, we'll probably be doing a lot more of this live stuff, taking it from the chat room to generate uh, your ideas and thoughts into the show. Because um, we'll need more comment if we go weekly. But if we do that, we're going to be on Fridays. But for right now, you can catch us every other week on uh, Friday. Just go to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar to see that. Um, and, of course, we also announce when we're doing it live over at facebook.com slash jupiterbroadcasting. You can catch it there. And always subscribe to the RSS feeds. Then you just get it when we release it. And you don't have to worry about it. All right. Well, and uh, hey, Alan, welcome back for your first episode. Welcome back. It's good to be back, hopefully. And thank you to the live chat room for joining us. You guys uh, you guys <laughs> fueled the show today, and we appreciate it. What? Uh, Nothing. All right, everyone. We'll see you in a fortnight. Bye. Are you laughing at me? No. Thanks for listening to Legend of the Stone Owl. Legend of the Stone Owl is produced over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. That's where you can find the show, subscribe, all those good things, leave us feedback, and also where you'll find us every two weeks. Thanks for listening to this episode. We'll see you in a fortnight. still recording so here we go yeah chris what's your uh you were talking about how you probably need to choose microsoft flight simulator 2.0 hey and and your friend gets to be the gas and you get to be the steering wheel (laughs) i blew your mind that episode dude i didn't have a super nintendo i had a sega i was a selfish lover with that game (laughs) (laughs) oh you just write hd on the end in the other room, why do you ask that dumb question? Because <laughs> I'm dumb. <laughs> and somebody always has to drop the fucking golden eye bomb. Soul Calibur? Yeah, and then I went to uh, 64, then PlayStation 2. Visuals, please, Alan. Hey, Alan. It's in the dock, dildo. NFL Blitz. Got the late night munchies. Munch your friend, too. <laughs> Twisted, uh, metal said, Twisted Metal 2. Oh. See, I like I like Twisted Metal Black. Warcraft right, 3. I should go home with it. You can hear welcome to <laughs> Yes. Alright, we gotta talk about Mario Party now. Oh, Star that Fox. guy's money! Ugh. Super Nintendo, shut up. Shut no, up. no, oh my god, are you really saying that? No, I'm not. Then Xbox. Then 3 Sizzle! I was irresponsible for that game's needs. (laughs) (laughs) Forced myself on that game.